What's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Susan and I'm very, very happy to have you guys back for another episode of Finance Friday. Now, this is a question I get a lot when people have a lump sum amount of money. They've been doing their research and they have quite a number of options of where to invest their money or what to do with this money. And one of the investment options that some of us uh, want to know how to consider is whether to buy a piece of land or not. Now, for today's episode, I figured very, very quickly I can take you through five considerations I would make or questions I would ask and answer before I make a decision as to whether I'm going to take a lump sum amount of money and buy a piece of land with it. If you'd like to know what these considerations are, I encourage you to keep watching. Now, the first thing I would do is to analyze my current financial situation. Obviously, everything starts with budgeting. So I would want to look at where I am at. Like as of today, how do I do like my budgeting, my saving, my investing? And the reason why you want to look at that is because you want to look at maybe like how this piece of land or how this property fits into your finances especially if you're going to be topping up for example using a loan um so for so many of us we take credit facilities so maybe you put like a down payment on the land and maybe you're gonna take a loan either from your bank or your circle or your employer to finalize let's say repayment for that piece of property especially if it is premi premiumly priced the reason why i would look at my um budget is to really find out if i can manage the monthly uh or you know the the, the regular payments to be able to actually acquire this piece of land i've seen um land sellers who actually allow you to pay a deposit and then literally pay slowly until you're done paying for that property this is so so important if you're not going to be buying the land cash like upfront payment you really really need to look at your budget and for me this is important because um you want to consider how long will i be paying the land for for example am i able to do the payments or manage these payments in case anything happens to my job or in case anything happens to my business like figure out from the word go where the rest of the money is going to come from and how you're going to ensure consistency and cash flow for you to be able to meet that particular obligation. So please start by analyzing and assessing your personal financial situation, how much liquidity you have, how you're going to finance the project, and for how long you're going to be required to make payments, if at all you're not actually going to pay upfront. Okay? The second thing that I would ask myself is why am I buying this piece of land? So am I buying it because I envision myself retiring or I want to build a retirement home here? Um, am I buying because I am looking at some medium term or long term returns for, from where when I sell the land and, you know, maybe you're looking at it for appreciation purposes? Right. Am I buying the land because I want to build a rental and have tenants come in here? Or am I just getting a piece of property or land because it makes me feel financially secure? And this is the way that I have been taught. Some of us actually are buying land because it is the tangible asset. It's an asset you can see. I actually used to think that that's a joke until, you know, the more I talk to my clients and I ask them, so why are you buying this piece of land? And they tell me, coach, I know this is not an investment or it may or may not be a very good investment. But me nataka kukwa na mchanga yangu, like I, land is scarce. And so I want to actually own somewhere where in case anything happened to me, I can put like a, 
mabati structure or just do whatever but like the for some of us the ownership aspect of it is very very emotional and you want to actually buy and own the piece of land just for the sake of you feeling like at least i have a tangible asset if you're anything like some of our gen xers and boomers most of them do not actually believe that you've done anything with your money if you have not um at least bought some form of a property. So if you're a Gen Z or you're, you're a millennial and maybe you even have bills and bonds and other assets that are generating an income, maybe your parents or someone in your family or an influential, an older influential person in your life has just been telling you, and if it's just good for you to have a piece of land, just buy this property, you know, you'll never know you can do farming. It's considered an asset, whether you know the purpose for it or not, some of us are just encouraged to get it. Now, it might be that that's your reason. From the standpoint of a financial advisor, I usually do not recommend that you just get a piece of land for the sake of getting it because the reason as to why you're getting the piece of land is very, very important. And I'll explain to you why. Um, you know, when when you're looking at, for example, the, the, the land for appreciation purposes, some of us are buying pieces of property in the middle of nowhere, like that will take so long to ever even appreciate significantly in value. And maybe that is not like there are pieces of property that are right for buying for the purpose of appreciation purposes. Um, maybe you're buying a piece of property that you're saying, I'd like to build and, uh, you know, I, I, I just want to own this land in case, I, you know, I want to build a house or a structure. This land is on the border of Kenya and Tanzania. It's at Namanga. Your job is in the CBD in Nairobi. You, at what point are you going to live on the boy? At what point are you going to live in Namanga if your landlord kicks you out? <laughs> and, and you know, how are you going to be commuting to your workplace if at all? You know, some of these things you want to consider. So it's so, so important from the wide go. Um, for whatever reason you're getting the piece of land, I think it's valid as long as it makes sense to you. The only discourage, uh, discouragement I'll give is getting the property just for the sake of it. You will end up probably regretting that decision because any investment decision that is done without some form of clarity as to why the asset is being acquired and the purpose to which it will serve, um, you know, might not end up doing exactly what you thought it can do for you. Maybe some months or years later, you realize that there was probably better use for your money. So my encouragement is that be very clear from the word go why you're getting it. If it's for precision purposes, um, understand whether that is the best area or property for appreciation. If it's land you plan to live on, look at amenities around, schools around, where you are at at this stage of your life. Are you actually going to live in that place and thrive in that place or would you be forced to maybe move, relocate because of children, your children's schooling or education or relocating because of work or availability of other things? So you want to really, really be keen on your why. Number three, what are your actual investment goals? Like when you think about your money situation and where you are right now, what would you want your money to do for you? Like what are you trying to achieve in the long run? And does this piece of land that you're now considering to buy actually support that vision or support that goal, right? Um, why this is important is because for some um, of us, and I've seen quite a lot of my clients doing this. I'm seeing a lot of us buy a piece of land as our first ever investment. And again, for me, that decision is usually not one I would call like the best kind of decision because I genuinely feel that you have to start like, first of all, building some form of like, um, you know, you have like I would not say I have, let's say, 500,000 today. And I don't have any other investment that is worth 500000 or somewhere close to that. My first 500000 the first thing I would do with it would not be to buy, like, let's say, a piece of idle land, for example. Um, so you want to consider, like, is this my first ever investment? Um, and is why we are asking that is because you want to confirm that truly, 
of all the options available in the market, of all the things this money can do for me, me buying this piece of land or me buying this property is the best use of my money. Now, the reason why this is important is because money is not, unless you're boiling and you're a billionaire, then this would not be an issue or you're a millionaire, but money is such a scarce resource for so many of us. Yeah, like if that is all you have, that's between you and poverty. This is like the five, the 500K you have or the a million that you have or the two million that you have. For me, it's so important for an individual to really consider what are my long term financial goals? What am I trying to achieve? And is this the best use of my money at the stage of uh, life that I am in or at the stage of wealth creation that I am in now? Um, I've had some people, even on this channel, tell me, Susan, why do you always, uh, you know, why do you always come off as you're very, like, not supportive of pieces of property? It's because, um, I mean, I'm not not supportive of them, but I feel like a lot of the reason why we buy land is so um, emotional and not logical. We don't think of the financial implications of it. So I'll give you a good example. Like for me at the stage of life I am in, I am in what I would call like the wealth accumulation journey. And that is like a, for a lot of us, we, we are young professionals maybe, um, or you're just now starting to really acclimatize with the whole financial literacy thing. And you've never thought of like what your goals are. And for me, I've always told people, if you want to identify what your financial goals are, the first thing you want to ask yourself is what would I want my money to do for me in the short term, in the medium term or in the long term? Okay. You also want to find out like what exactly do I want? Is it do I want uh, passive income? Do I have an emergency fund? If there was a rainy day, like right now, would I be able to handle it? Are my medium term to long term, or rather medium term goals handled? Like if I need to pay school fees, if I need to maybe, like you want to look at life in general and ask yourself how liquid or how um, how well can my the money I have for me right now preserve and protect my interests and my goals right so if i didn't have like a rainy day fund if i'm struggling to like think about where school fees will come from uh you know in the next year if i'm looking at like like there are or already existing liquidity problems in terms of me being able to handle just the usual life financial things that come up then i don't think it makes sense to tie up um a big capital or a huge sum of money in a in a piece of land where in the first place I don't even know how I'm going to develop. So I'm struggling financially. I'm buying a piece of land. In the near future, there's no signs or s symptoms <laughs> of where I'm going to get money to build. There is no signs and symptoms of where I'm going to get money to actually start this farming project. Like it's literally almost like your paycheck to paycheck uh, kind of a scenario. So it's so, so important to, first of all, clarify what you really want your money to do for you, what your financial goals are, and then literally make sure it makes sense and you can see it for yourself exactly how this piece of land or how this property plays into that plan and works so well and so beautifully for you. Yeah. Now, if you're considering this piece of land an investment, because I always ask people, why are you buying land? And they tell me, because this is an investment, I always request or encourage someone to actually find out what the real ROI or what the real return on your investment is. For example, if you're buying a piece of land and you're telling me, coach, this piece of land in five years, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to sell it and make it money. So you're getting it for appreciation purposes. Please find out, like in that area, what is the actual rate of uh, property appreciation? Like, you know, historically or in the recent past, how have, how, you know, by what percentage have has property or land in that area appreciated in value? That will give you a rough idea of whether you're the Lulu or whether you're actually um, on the right track Um when you say that in five years, I'm going to sell this and I'm going to make a very, very good profit. Okay. Um, 
if you're going to buy, for example, for rental purposes, please uh, understand the rental return in that particular area that you intend to build rentals because you could have this vision of I'm going to collect this X amount of money. And if you don't do very good research and you don't run your numbers, you might actually end up realizing that the rental uptake of or what you had anticipated is not ideally what happens. Yeah. Um, if you're going to be putting up like a farming project, because I see people also buying land for the purpose of like, let's say, keeping pigs or whatever farming project, please always, always, always run your math and run your numbers. And if it's something you've never done before, please do not go into it blind. Um, I had a client earlier on this year that told me that they were encouraged to buy a piece of land and plant trees so that they can sell like the logs and everything. And to date, it's been one of the premium mistakes of her life because first of all, they did, they, you know, she didn't know that it was going to take more than like nine to 12 years for these things to grow. There is the security involved, like for the property and for the law, uh, for the trees that she's growing. There's all this additional cost to this venture that she wasn't so well prepared for. And it's such a long term investment. I remember her telling me that, my God, if I had taken this money, like she was running her math and put it in a in a particular investment that didn't um, involve me hiring security and following up on all these things and going to you know, up country every time to just check on all of this, she, she'd probably have put that money to better use, right? So if your forte is farming, you've been doing it, maybe even on leased property or your parents' property, you're such a guru in it. You have a proven track record that this is something that you will thrive in, especially if you even get additional property, then you can do it. But if it's something you're completely green at, so many of us have been encouraged to do stuff that we are completely green at. And even the person who's telling you, they're just telling you because they also had that this is a good venture, but they've never even done it. Please do not embark on some of this project to a point that you're even buying land for them and you have zero experience. So please always make sure that you're calculating your return on investment and these are some of the reasons as to why sometimes at a particular depending on the stage of life that you're in you might probably notice that there is a better or rather there's better use of your money in this season not all the time but in this season there's probably better use of your money doing another type of investment than maybe uh, buying land please guys ensure it makes sense returns wise for you to buy a piece of land Otherwise, it is not an investment. It's just an emotional purchase. Okay. Finally, it's so important for you to check on the government's infrastructural development plans. Please just work with the right professionals when you're getting your pieces of land. Ensure you have a lawyer to help you with understanding things like ownership structure. Work with your valuers and surveyors just so that you can confirm you're not being sold, number one public property or even land that um, pretty much was supposed to be like a public amenity um, or a land that has ownership issues. And very, very importantly, as I said, pay attention to what the proposed infrastructural development projects are because that could severely impact the value of the land or the uh, property values in that particular area. Um, obviously, especially here in Kenya, like this year, we saw people losing homes, right? Um, we've seen quite a number of buildings go down and stuff like that. So you want to really, really be keen on your due diligence, especially on any project that the government intends to either do in the area or maybe even in the middle of your piece of land or your piece of property, because that will affect all the plans that you had for that particular place. Um, and generally, one of the things that I will say um, as, uh, as a parting shot, we are not saying or rather I don't, I mean, I, I am not saying that you know, you. this is just the only piece of pro or other investment that you do all of these things with. I always tell people that, I mean, you guys know we've done uh, due diligence videos even on other, invest, uh, other kinds of investments before. 
bottom line is that it has to make sense. Just because as Africans, we are told buy land, buy land, buy land does not mean you should buy land. Just because you've been told um, uh, land is an investment does not actually mean that it is the right investment for you. Just because you've been told, you know, you need to own your own soil. Um, <laughs> you know, it's important even if you don't know what you're going to do with it and if it's the best use of your money, does not mean that you have to do it. Land can be such an amazing investment if done in the right way, by the right person and at the right time for the right reasons. So we are not discounting that it is a good investment. However, it requires way more due diligence than some of us give it. Land requires way more planning and projecting than what we actually accord to it. We think that it is just an, you know, buying this area, as long as I have the money, that's not how land requires a lot of due diligence, a lot of personal reflection, a lot of evaluating your pocket, a lot of evaluating you as, again, as we said, your investment goals, the timelines, and even the stage you are in your journey. If you're in your capital accumulation stage, you probably want to put money um, where it's going to, first of all, grow and compound and earn you more money. And maybe at some point when you have um, other kinds of investments that where your capital is preserved and growing, maybe even one or two that have the potential to earn you passive income. Then at that particular point, I feel like some of us can get away with buying one or two or three pieces of property that you can let uh, or rather you can live to live and around for five to 10 years without the feeling the urge or the need to liquidate them for emergencies or for things like school fees or other life goals, right? Why? Because you have the luxury to have two million, five million lying around somewhere and you're still comfortable handling other areas of your life because you're aware you've structured your investments and diversified them in such a way that Land is just one of your investments, not all of your investments, okay? So I really hope this video was helpful. I'd like to hear from you on what you think of these um, considerations to make. If you have any to add or any experiences, good or bad, with buying land, we'd like to read some of those comments. Um, and obviously, if you have questions, you know exactly what to do so thank you so much for watching this video remember to like it share it also turn on the notification bell and subscribe so that you can be notified every time i upload a new video till the next episode of finance friday make sure you stay safe Ooh.